This is very uh, obvious on, on diffusion. It can be a neuroenteric cyst, which is often rich with proteins, and the location of this cyst is very specific. It's often on this location, anterior to the junction in between the cervical spine and, and, and the, the, the brain stem. And you have to think of, of this, this diagnosis when you have this cyst in this location. And prominent arachnoid granulation, which can provoke like holes when, when you have your venogram, and which can be very big, and which can even provoke hypertension. You, you see that you know that there is a, a very severe disease in, in, in women, which is uh, idiopathic uh, hypertension, uh, infrequent hypertension, and it can be caused by prominent arachnoid granulation that. Um, that uh, impair the, the flow of the veins in, in the lateral sinuses. And the choroid uh, fissurosis, which is kind of arachnoid cyst, and it's a malformation. It is very specific because of its location. And just remember this location, it is always a choroid fissurosis. No, no follow-up, no thing, no complication, no epilepsy, nothing with, with this cyst. The addition of prevascular space or scope are, are the cystic lesion we can often see. Remember, it is often very easy to make the diagnosis because the location is specific around the, the anterior commissura, uh, which we can see there like a mustache in the peduncle, and the, or or because they are like little lines that uh, are full. full uh, of CSF, sometimes it's more complicated because these cystic spaces are huge and they are especially huge in this location on, on, on the pinnacle and, and this patient was completely asymptomatic. He had an MRI because uh, uh, his grandfather had an aneurysm and he had a, a, just a checkup for, for the brain and, and we discovered this and, and we follow this and he has no sign. It, it is really big um, um, and perivascular spaces. And the appear the uh, and it, there we see it, which is more complicated with a lot of things inside and with often a diffusion that is normal, no eye, eye diffusion. When you have a cyst, what do you have to do? T1, T2, etc. But very important <coughs> diffusion. And also the flare, because you see that you know that the flare gives more information than T2 on the component of the cyst. And thin T2 slices. For example, there is an epidermoid cyst of, of this pontocerebral angle. On T2, it, it's like a cyst, it's, it's just uh, white. But when you perform the thin slices, you, you very well see that there is a difference in between the liquid because the liquid is it's just darker on the side of the epidermoid cyst and the, the flare also is darker and of course the diffusion give, gives us the diagnosis. What else? Aneurysm. Be careful with the aneurysm. When they are completely thrombosed, they can present as an um, eye signal ball on flare. They can be not seen on the, the MRI because they are thrombosed and use all the sequences. And especially when you perform MRI, use the, the, the primitive slices and not only the reformatted image. Have always a look at, at the, 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 the axial slices because on the axial slices, you can see very well the aneurysm. You can see on the reformatted images. And hematoma, and you know that the hematoma uh, depends on the, the timing, the signal. The shape depends on the virtual <coughs> space and large. And when you have a biconvex shape like this, it's probably extra dual. And it has to, to, to have this shape on two, two different plans. And if it is more, more uh, diffuse, it is probably subdural. When you have a large or diffuse meningeal lesion, what can it be? If it's dural, think of hypostatic, uh, orthostatic hypotension. It is due to a CSF leak, something, a uh, lumbar function, trauma, a big, a big arachnid cyst, a, a big uh, cyst to develop on the roots, and the, the, the main symptom is an orthostatic headache. It means that the patient is very well uh, in his, his bed, uh, he's lying in the morning, he's very well. As soon as he gets up, he gets a headache. 
so say it's lazy. No, it is a, a, the orthostatic hypotension. And the main thing, signs are an enlargement of the dural space with a high hypersignal on flare because there are some venous um, uh, yeah, impairment and it, there is a little blood and because the subdural space is enlarged so you can see very well the, the veins <coughs> and it provokes the, this big contrast enhancement which is a dural enhancement and all the signs are the cold central displacement <coughs> it just sucks the, the, the brain toward the, 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 the the, the spine and pituitary enlargement because of the venous engorgement and sometimes subdural fluid collection. So this is very specific and it is interesting to make this diagnostic because as you know with a blood patch often you really cure the patient and the signs are disappearing. The metastasis and the, the metastasis can go directly on the meningeal uh, layer or can be an uh, extension of the, the, the skull uh, invasion with metastasis and sometimes it's very complicated because when a patient has a cancer, he has neurological signs, he has a headache, the neurologists tend to make a lumbar function to see if, if there is a leptomeningeal extension and when there is a lumbar function it, it can be uh, the cause of um, orthostatic hypotension. So, if a patient arrives in your hospital and is suspect of having brain uh, leptomeningeal or, or leptomeningeal spread, you have to perform the MRI before the, the lumbar puncture and not after because it complicates everything. Sarcoidosis and can provoke very thick and, and uh, thickening and the and, ends of the dura and uh, also meningioma, which can be very tricky because the meningioma can be only uh, a bone, you see, bone thickening with some spikes and a little thickening, a very little thickening uh, of the, the meninge that can't be seen on CT scan, of course, and that can have to be searched for on, on an animal. And chronic pachymeningitis, and I, I chose a CT scan to show you that the chronic pachymeningitis can be calcified and it's caused mainly by granulomatosis. And this very tricky case also, when you have a bone marrow disease and the bone marrow doesn't function, it has to be replaced by something. And, and some uh, stem cells go uh, in, in all the organism and, and they spread and they go to the meningeal gel and to the, the, the choroid plexus and they, they provoke this thickening of the, the structure and the big contrast uptake of the structure with sometimes a mass effect and edema and sometimes it can even bleed so when you have a patient that has a myelofibrosis when he is old or a hemolytic anemia and you have these images think of extra medullary hematosis it's very important. The leptomeningeal now. Leptomeningeal, of course, calcimetous meningitis is, is a, a, big, a big cause of uh, leptomeningeal uptake. And uh, the, the, the contrast enhancement is seen on cranial lobes or panchima. And clinical data is very important. It's very seldom when a cancer just begins with leptomeningeal sites. Generally, it is the end of the cancer. The, the, the prognosis is very poor. And you have the, the, the uh, contrast uptake of all the leptomeningeal space and of the cranial nerves, like in this case. The cerebral disease also is uh, uh, characterized clinically by severe seizures that can happen as soon as the kid is born. And it is a pile and uh, sorry, uh, pile angioma calcification and atrophy. And I, I put it in the right flare with gadolinium. It's very, very good to depict all the leptomeningeal enhancement. And my advice is if you have uh, if you look for a leptomeningeal um, uptake, contrast uptake, 
please do your flare after the gallium injection. It's very, very good. You, you won't miss the edema, you won't miss the, the brain lesions, but you, you'll enhance the, the vision of, of this enhancement, like in this case, so you can see very, very well the, the pile uh, enhancement, the pile up, the contrast update. And sarcoidosis, I told you I, I will speak of sarcoidosis during all my speech, sarcoidosis with all those enhancement of the leptomergia and that block you see the CSF resorption so the, the patient had to be shot. And uh, the tuberculosis of course more seldom but can that can also give not only abscesses or, or uh, brain lesion but also meningeal enhancements. So more about the CSF, when you have a hyper signal T1 it is blocked. Most of the time it is blood, it is a subarachnoid hemorrhage that can be uh, diffused, profuse, or that can be located. <coughs> or it is very located like this. Think of a cortical vein thrombosis. Think of a complication, hemorrhagic complication of vasus muscle, reversible vasus muscle. And be very careful when, when you have uh, the images. Always look at all the images, and in this patient with uh, headache, we saw this image, which is very strange. It looks like a frontal uh, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. In fact, it's just artifacts due to the teeth. So be very careful when you interpret the flare. As soon as you have metal in, in the, the, the mouth, all the images can be artifacts. So it, you have to be very careful in your interpretation. The facts. Uh, after the blood, some time, you will see that it's very, very seldom. This was the, the case of a rupture, the dermal cyst in, in the subarachnoid space, and you can see there is fat in the, in, in the ventricles and in, in the sulk. It's really very, very uh, rare, and m more and more seldom, because we don't do it, this anymore. We used to, to inject lipiodol, and lipiodol is fat, and sometimes you can find old people with some drops of lipiodol, and especially we use it to, to detect the uh, schwannoma of the eighth uh, cranial nerve. And in old people, you can detect still fat, that is, it's rare, and proteins. And this is a patient with a sarcoidosis. This, this is the T1, and this is the T2. And you can see that there is nearly no difference in between the T1 and the T2 because the protein level is so high that it, the, the CSF <coughs> is white on T1. And when you have this hyper signal on flare, there is the blood, there is the fat, but there are many occasions to see this hyper signal, such as artifacts I, I showed you. When you had an MRI, uh, the, 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 the gadolinium will go to the CSF one to two days after the injection, and if the patient